Hey, what is going on, everyone? Hopefully, you're having a great Friday so far. It is another episode of Millennial with Billy and Mel. So, hopefully, everybody's doing well today. So, what we're going to be talking about today is something that I'm really excited about, and I know Mel's is going to be excited about this too. Um, and it's because, uh, really, and Mel, I didn't even tell you this. Really, what sparked this idea for me was I was in a club. We, I was in the Central PA Clubhouse. Okay. Right. Uh, uh, that happens um, every Thursday at one o'clock right now. And that was the topic of a conversation was like, do we really need a coach? Right. Do we need mm -hmm. a mentor? And so um, and so I'm really excited to kind of discuss, you know, what a good mentor looks like to us, maybe why we would get a mentor. Um, maybe somebody that's watching might be a mentor or a coach. Maybe you can give us some insight as well mm -hmm. um maybe let us know if you have a coach or you don't have a coach or we'd love to get your interaction on that uh on that aspect of things so but if you are going to be jumping on here with us make sure you comment below let us know that you're jumping on because we'd love to give you a shout out and if you're going to be jumping on the replay please please make sure you do the exact same thing so but without further ado before we get started today Mel, how are you doing Mel is super excited because she <laughs> you're a little bit late starting just because Mel is super excited because she got a microphone, and so she has upped her podcast game <laughs> a little bit. So she got the Yeti, which is a really cool product uh, to, to have. So Mel, what's going on? Let's, have... let's hear this mic. Testing, one, two, testing. <laughs> <laughs> I had to get it to match my other Yeti, right? No, I'm super excited. Um, I want to test this out. I didn't even open it uh, really up. I got it out of the box and I set her up and this is the first time I'm using it. So I'm very, very excited. I've been talking about this for how many episodes, how many weeks? And finally, um, unfortunately, it probably you can probably hear all up in my sinuses right now with my allergies. <laughs> uh, very clear. So, um, so yeah, allergies have been bad still since last week, as we mentioned. But um, but yeah, I'm, um, I got to catch up with some friends this week and had some, some little, um, dinners and, and tonight is my best friend Cecilia's birthday. So we're going to Lancaster and I'm so excited. Hopefully I will get to see you to give you your 10 X planner. I've been using it all week. So yeah. I'm super excited about all these new things and fun things that are happening. And I signed up. I don't know if I told you for the boot camp. I want to show you this little workbook. I'm going to do it all next weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I even got some more paddles, so we can talk about that. And it's the first huge chunk of it on Friday is going to be personal and business finances. So I think oh. you're going to be super excited to hear about that. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm so excited. And that just ties into what we're going to be talking about today, mentorship, coaching. Uh, and because I think like, you know, kind of get into it. I think there's so, you know, I posted actually in the Central PA group that I was potentially looking for a coach. And right. you know, a couple of people messaged me, right? And there was a couple of people that messaged me that were like, are you okay? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm good. I think we all need some form of mentoring or coaching because like I in the in the caption I put, you know, even the most successful people, we don't all know the answers, right? We're not mm -hmm. gonna know everything that we need to know. Right. If we did, I said, I said something funny. I said, you know, if you knew all the answers, we wouldn't need Google anymore, right? Mm -hmm. Because people would just be calling you for the answer. Right. And so I think for me, the reason I pose that question, you know, do we really need a coach? I think the answer is yes. And I think there's lots of different areas that you can get coached in. But um, but what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts? Do you think we really need a coach or in general need a coach? Definitely. I think we all need um, a coach. Every time you hear coach, I think of put me in coach, <laughs> ready to play a um, little CCR. But I think for both business and personal life, coaches are great. And I think that we have them and we may not know it. You know, we talked a little bit about advice and asking and giving advice last week and I think that there's definitely people who are our mentors potentially that we go to advice for and we just don't know that they're a mentor. You know, maybe it wasn't an actual conversation or we may be mentoring people that we don't know either because we're, you know, giving them advice. But I think for both business and personal life, it goes back to all the things that we've said about self-improvement, in my opinion. 
you want to improve yourself. So you're going to someone who can give you that um, guidance or, or, or teaching you or advice. So absolutely. I'm, I think we all do. I think that ties perfect into what last week was about was yeah. advice, right? <laughs> like yeah. Talking about, and we kind of hit on that topic of like, what's good advice, what's bad advice. And so like, you know, for me, I think why I would want a coach, uh, and for me, like I already do a lot of self-development, so I don't know necessarily if I need help in like a mind shift, mm -hmm. right? I think I'm, I'm good there, but I feel like in business or like weight loss or something along those lines, you get to a certain point where it's kind of just like you plateau, right? Like right. it's kind of like, like, what do I go from here? Right. Because to get to the next level, you have to level up, right? Like mm -hmm. if you're trying to get to level 10 and you're at level nine, right? But you don't know how to get to level 10. Sometimes I think like for us, like we were talking about advice at, at last week, you know, sometimes you can get that tunnel vision, right? Where you're just like, oh, I know, you know, I know what I'm supposed to be doing, but you might miss other things that are happening mm -hmm. in your, you know, that, that could be opportunities and I feel like that's, and I want to get your opinion. I feel like that's what a coach, you know, once you get to a certain level, I, th I feel like that's when you really need a coach. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that we, you know, we go to people for advice, but I think a mentor is really somebody that um, overall, hey, Heather, who <laughs> she's watching, sure. Um, you know, it's someone to keep you on track. I think also it's accountability. It's, you know, if you have problems with, working towards, um, you know, not problems, but, you know, maybe working towards a goal. Um, so I think that, you know, I think it, it's just a way to accelerate, in a sense, some of that self-improvement that we were talking about by having somebody else there that can help um, almost not facilitate, but give us that extra push too. Yeah. You know, and I was just thinking about it is like, you know, in, in some of the conversations that I've been having uh, that just people messaging me and stuff like that. You know, I think a big thing I think you kind of mentioned it is, is accountability. I think when you get to a certain level. And for me, like, you know, I read the book. Um, I don't know if you've read this book yet. Uh, the Atomic Habits or have you Not heard of yet. that? No, I just started. Like, give me a little baby steps. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> so uh, it's a great book for anybody that's read it. If anybody's read it, let us know in the comment section. It's a great, mm -hmm. great book. Uh, and it's really changed my way of doing things. Like I would always feel like when I would get up in the morning that I didn't really like, I would plan my day out, but I didn't feel like I like was accomplishing a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I would let a lot of things get in the way. And so, you know, um, for me, like I have an activity tracker. And so like it helps you build these habits, right. To be, to be successful. It kind of like autopilots the things that you should be getting done on a daily basis. But um, for me, like, I think I'm now at a point where I'm good at holding myself accountable, but it's always nice to just have like that source of accountability because you're not going to always, you know, it's just that little added bonus of like at the end of the month, whatever it looks like, you know, what it, I guess, I don't know how coaching works because I've never had one. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, at the end of the month, at the end of each week, whatever that looks like to have like somebody that you have to not answer to, but right. you have to be accountable to, right? Like, Hey, I set these goals for myself and now I have to tell somebody whether or not like, I accomplished my goals or I didn't accomplish my goals. Right. 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 And I think that I, I did have a business coach a couple of years ago, actually. And it was great because it was holding me accountable. But I think there's a difference between also ones that you pay <laughs> and ones that are, like, um, you know, as far as a mentor and, you know, somebody that's more it, it, you're not paying them per se. I would think that the coaches, sometimes you are paying them to be your coach and keep you accountable. Um, so you want to get your money's worth out of it too. So I think there's differences between those two things. Um, but I think that, you know, I, that's, that's where I felt was I, I kind of knew what I needed to do for myself. I just needed somebody to, to say, did you do this? <laughs> and, you know, give me extra push and then have to check in and have to answer. But the problem with me with that was like, I was kind of giving more, I was giving the things that I needed or wanted to do. 
And then it was just somebody. So I wasn't really getting out of it the coaching that I, I needed or wanted. Um, it just didn't work out for me in the sense because I wanted somebody who was going to know the things that I didn't know. Uh, yeah, I went and said, hey, here's what I want to do. Here's what I need. Keep me accountable, but take my money. But, you know, no, I needed somebody to to tell me the things that I didn't know. And that's also with, I think, mentors. And again, whether you're paying or not, um, you know, that's the whole thing is you're getting you're getting that advice and that accountability from someone who more than likely has been there or done yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that's such like, a, you know, because you when you're obviously we, we are really big on making investments in yourself. Right. Because it's the best investment that you can make um, best return on your investment that you'll ever get. And so. You know, it's not a. I, I think it's not often a question of like, are we going to make that investment? But are we going to say like, is this investment truly what I'm, what I'm, what I want to get out of this, right? And I think you kind of hit it, hinted on it, is that you know, there's a lot of coach. I mean, there's a lot of people that do what you do. There's a lot of people that do what I do. There's a lot of coaches out there and mentors and stuff like that. And that's like the thing that you always got to be wary about is like, you know like for me, like when I'm thinking about a coach, I do want somebody that's been there before and has success because if they haven't, like, you know, like how, how does that work? Like, how do you follow somebody that has at least walked that path at one point in their life? Right. And so, you know, I think, you know, definitely making sure your personality is mixed is a good thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, I don't want somebody that's like a Debbie Downer. Right. right? Cause I'm, I'm very extroverted. I'm a yellow, right? <laughs> so right. I, I probably could use, like, I'm probably not going to be with a red, right? Because right. that's just not how my style matches. But in the same token, like you, I don't think you want somebody to think just like you, right? I think mm -hmm. you want a counterpoint to what you're thinking. Right. And you don't want somebody just to tell you what you want to hear. Obviously, like the advice part we talked about last week, sometimes people need to hear the things that they don't want to hear. But there's, I think there's different different categories in a sense of of mentorship too because you had said you know oh when you said hey i'm looking for a mentor or like a coach people are like are you okay what's going on like you know they were looking at it more maybe in your personal or like mental health issues you know um versus there's career development mentorship and obviously professional and then you know personal development just in you know, relationships. relationships. Yeah. So I think that there's different, there's absolutely different. And, and even like in organizations and nonprofits and it's not necessarily, you know, I mean, it's kind of a business, but so I think that there's different parts of it, but I think that it's almost what are the responsibilities of a mentor? You know, are people thinking I'd like to be a mentor? Oh, that's exhausting. I can't, I don't have the time for that. I mean, you know, people have come to me and, you know, wanted some advice or for business and, I definitely want to help anybody, but it's, you know, what, what are the roles, I guess, and a responsibility of a mentor? Because, you know, I, I think that there's people that I go to advice for that I would love to lean on a little bit more. Do you have the conversation? Do you want to, will you be my mentor <laughs> or do they just, are they just your mentor in, it just happens. I mean, there's, it's funny because I, I have all these questions about it. Um, you know, with Leadership Harrisburg, we got paired up with a mentor and, um, you know, they were supposed to reach out to us or we, you know, can lean on them that have gone through the program as well. That's a great resource to have some really great mentors through that program. Um, yeah. You know, but how does, how do you kind of get about even being, being mentored or being a, a mentor? What is it? Team, a mentor. Uh, men, a men, mentee. And a mentor, I believe. Right. That's how you say it. Right. But yeah. It's like, it's like, who do you kind of reach out to? Right. And it's like, that, that was probably the reason why I posted what I posted is because it's like, you know, and, and like you said, it was definitely for me, it's kind, kind of career driven mentorship and finding that right person. And, um, but what's interesting is, is finding the person that fits your needs is mm -hmm. probably just the biggest thing that I'm thinking of as far as, as, as a mentor. But like when, like you said, I think there's two forms of mentorship, right? There's the 
direct, which is I would call the paid version, right? Like you're paying mm -hmm. for it. And that person specifically works for you to help you accomplish your goals. But I, you know, in, in the clubhouse room, I had mentioned there was a indirect. And so that's what you were kind of hinting on is mm -hmm. like, Hey, maybe it's somebody that's in your industry that has experience. Right. Mm -hmm. And you, you see them as where you want to be. And so in my mind that they automatically become a mentor, even yeah. though they're not going to necessarily maybe have a structure with you and be meeting you every week or meeting you every, you know, whatever, whatever time frame a normal mentor meets. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe it's somebody that you can just lean on to ask them, Hey, I, I don't know how to do this. How do you do this? Or like, I know you've been doing this a while. I struggle with this. How did you get past it? Mm -hmm. And so like having that indirect mentorship, I think that's what I've been doing for a really long time. But mm -hmm. I think maybe the route I want to look at now is see what direct mentorship looks like. Right. Well, and that's kind of, I think goes back to that accountability in a sense, you switch it a little bit to a little bit more of a serious help or advice versus just conversation. Because I think that some of the people that I look at as, as mentors, it's just when I, when I'm around them, I take a lot from the conversation. They're giving me uh, advice that I'm not even asking for. It's just sharing something and they're give they're giving their opinion. And I say, Oh, that's right. Yeah. I shouldn't have done it that way. Or I should work on that. And I take that from the conversation. So for me, a lot of it is just having those conversations that you're not, you don't really know that it's a mentor, but it is. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, because like I, I, I often, I often mention this and I think I've said it on the podcast a couple of times, especially like, you know, in self-development and stuff like that. And I mentioned this in that group that or that, that the clubhouse room that we were in is that like, I think everybody should have a board of directors. And we talked about this when it comes to advice, like there are certain people that you're going to go to advice for certain things. Like, you know, like relationship, money, um, career development, whatever it might be. And so like, that's another form of mentorship in my mind is that um, having those people that you can, that can directly impact you and that you trust. I think the biggest thing that I need with my mentor um, is trust, right? Like mm -hmm. I have to trust them enough to open up because I think that's a big thing about having a mentor is be, and we talked about this being vulnerable, right. And mm -hmm. letting, letting stuff out so that they can help you kind of unpack it, reorganize it and, and get you moving in the right direction. Yeah. It's almost, it's almost like they need to be a friend too, obviously, because, because you're wanting them to be supportive and to be able to communicate. You don't want them to put you down or this is, you know, Oh, this is, horrible, you're doing this wrong, oh, you shouldn't do this. Um, you know, you want to have that relationship, I think, in and whether it's a friendship or obviously just some type of a relationship. But I think that communication is going to be huge with uh, that person because you want to be able to to be able to communicate with them for sure. But I think that it could be somebody that you look up to, too, because like we said, that whether they have more experience or in the, in your industry or in life, um, you know, you, you might want to ask yourself a little bit about how you feel about that person. Like, do you admire them? Do you want to be like them? Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I mean, that's, you know, for me, well, we said about it, right. We said it last week, if, you know, don't take advice from somebody that you wouldn't trade positions with. Right. Um, and Lisa's has not been in your shoes. Uh, I think that's super important. I think, just being able to, like you've said a couple times now, connecting with somebody else. Um, because if there's no connection, like you're not going to get anything out of it. There's mm -hmm. there's no real mentoring. It's just kind of like you paid for someone to be your babysitter, right? right. And, and I want it to be more conversational rather than like, oh, this is just your check-in day. Did you do, <laughs> you know, X, Y, Z? Like how did that, how did that end Let up? Let me grade your homework. Like, yeah, I mean, I think it's it. Ma you make a good point about it not just being someone to check in because I think that it's also we said something earlier about not just hearing what you want to hear or telling you what you need to do. I think that's I think a good mentor also helps guide you to that place. So it's also about like motive motivating and um, 
kind of pushing you in the direction that you need to be without really giving you all the answers, maybe <laughs> like making you find the answers yourself. I don't know. No, I, I agree. Cause like, I think, I think a good mentor needs to ask questions, right? Like just like any business owner, like if you're trying to figure out about your client, you got to ask questions because like a lot of us, you know, had have had stuff happen in our lives, right? Most of us didn't get this far without <laughs> having <laughs> some kind of difficulty in life, mm -hmm. right? That has impacted the way we are now. And so, you know, being able to, you know, this is another thing I thought about is like being able to uncover stuff that might be holding you back that you don't realize is holding you back. Right. You know, like something happened in a past relationship, something happened in this, right? Something happened here. And you might not see it because you've just suppressed that, right? Like you've pushed it way down and you're like, hey, I don't even see it, but it's it's still always affecting like your mindset. It's affecting like you fully embracing whatever goal or dream or aspiration you might have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like counseling <laughs> just because that happened to me last week. But um but yeah, and I think it's funny that we're talking about this. I'm just thinking when you said about about trust and all that. I mean, could your could your partner be a mentor? Like your significant other in a sense, be somebody that you um I don't know it's a weird question, but somebody that you know helps make you a better know. person. I don't know, you know. I don't I don't know. I think I think you could be a mentor to somebody. No? Yeah, I like if you're talking about like being romantically involved, right? Like being yeah. like married or something like that. I don't think necessarily like the wife or the husband is necessarily a mentor. I think they're a supporter, right? They're the person because what ends up happening is, you know, you're emotionally tied to that person, right? And so if, like, you know, you say something or they say something, you know, emotion sparks up because you've, all those things are tied together. And so not to say that a wife or a husband couldn't be a mentor, right? And and like, you should go to your spouse for advice, right? And say, hey, you know, what do you think here? Because you're a team, you should be working together as one. But like, you know, it's also nice to have an unbiased opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's just not even connected to the result right like and they can just say it plainly because sometimes like you know you, you want to watch what you say or how you say it but with a mentor it might just be like hey you just need to hear it this way right right and and it's going to be like oh yeah you know because it it happens but i think you know a spouse or something like that a relationship like that Definitely, like, main thing is, like, there's, like, the, your support system. Without them, like, all else fails. Like, all is going to fail because, like, if you being an entrepreneur is hard enough, like, you need somebody to kind of recharge your battery. And so I think their support and kind of a mentor kind of role-ish kind of deal. Yeah, I think that there's qualities of being a mentor, and mentee, you know, kind of there's there's qualities about them that go go like you said, maybe more of like a supportive role. Um, but I also think I read somewhere that like it was almost 40 percent of professionals have a mentor and maybe also that some of the stuff that we're talking about with trust and communication and accountability. Maybe I'm just thinking having a mentor would help the relationship like maybe maybe not the person being the mentor okay but like having a mentor and using and, and developing those skills and having all of those things that are that that involvement with a mentor can definitely uh, benefit the relationship yeah and brandon says finding a mentor is very life-changing there you go yeah and i i totally agree with that i mean because you know it, it just it improves your communication skills, mm -hmm. right? When you're, when you're sitting down with somebody and you're kind of uncovering stuff like, well, I didn't know that was there. And, you know, and then you can take that communication skill back to your relationship because that we've talked about this before. Like the key aspect of any good relationship is communication, 
like mm -hmm. over communicate whenever you can um, because none of us are mind readers, right? <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Especially in a relationship and, you know, just say what, what you need and say what you, you mean. And so I, I think having a mentor, you know, would definitely strengthen a relationship, help fix relationships, um, especially if somebody's been there before or, you know, has been in a relationship. Those are the people that you want to, you know, if you want to be in a good relationship or you want to have a good marriage, find a married couple that is. Yeah. Mentors. To look up to. Yeah. Right? And, and be like, hey, you know, if I find somebody that, you know, it's like whenever you get, <laughs> it's like whenever you talk to somebody, right. And you're like, oh, you know, the, you're trying to get to know them a little bit. Like how long you've been married? Oh, we've been married 25 years. Oh my God. 25 years. Like, you know, what's your advice? Like what, what, right. you, know, what you know, what's, what, what do you, you've, you've worked, it's worked this long. So you're doing something right. Right. So right. Um, asking people about those types of things too. Yeah. And learning from their experiences too. And I think you can make, obviously, I mean, you're making lifelong friends. I think that when somebody becomes a mentor to you, 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 they're, they're, uh, they're there along the, the rest of the journey in a sense, even if it's just for certain aspects of a business, you know, needing, needing it situationally, or if it's something that's going to be a forever, I think that, you know, you kind of make new friends across the years in different groups. If you have different mentors too, for different reasons. Um, but yeah, I think even being, being a mentor to people, um, you know, it, 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 I'm just thinking about all like the leadership Harrisburg stuff that I'm doing. It, it, there's so many benefits of being a mentor to people and volunteering and giving your experiences. I don't, don't they say with teaching, it helps us learn or what was the whole thing about obviously teaching. Um, yeah, no, that's, you that's, know, we're, that, that's totally right. Like helping when you teach something, it reinforces what you're, you've already learned because now you're having to explain it to somebody else. And so it's like, Wait, I do know what I'm talking about, right? Like, uh, yeah. and you know, and so I totally believe that. And so, um, you know, another thing that I, I like to bring up too is like, you, I have mentors in my life that don't even know they're mentors, right? Right. And that's like the people, like, like when you went to the Grant Cardone thing, right? You probably consider him a mentor, right? Because of the stuff that he puts out there. Does he know who you are? Probably not, right? Like, most likely not, so. <laughs> you know, but. I know. But some men, some of your mentors you will never meet. Some of your mentors, <laughs> some of your mentors are no longer here, right? They're right. no longer alive. But the things that they wrote, the things that they maybe if they're you know in this time frame where they actually you could you know there was video of them. Mm -hmm. um, that that's a great source of mentorship is is finding people that you know are like that that you can kind of just you know just take in, maybe not always having to give back information. Yeah. And you said, I mean, I think it does go hand, it, it, you know, a lot of the mentorship and coaching definitely has, there's a, there's a really, um, you know, close, I don't know the difference and or what, you know, what we want to call it. Some people call it differently, but I definitely think what we said too about finding certain people. And I definitely look at, at, the, you know, the 10X and the group and the, the, all the people there and Greg Cardone and all of the, the, you know, the, everything that stand, that to get behind it um, as a mentor, but it is, it is also coaching. I mean, look, I'm doing the, you know, the, the boot camp and the workbook and the, um, you know, all the things for next weekend, the interactive boot camp, And it is, it is a coaching group, you know, I mean, it is, it's definitely business coaching, but I think that you also want to find, you don't want to have a lot of different coaches or different, what do they say? You, the, one of the biggest downfalls or not for success, but is, is conflicting information. So when people are out looking for mentors or for advice or um, for, you know, these coaches, you're just out there trying to get involved in all of these things, but you almost need to stick with, one or two. What do you think about that? Like having too much coaching and mentorship? Yeah. And I think there's two things there, like that I heard you say, uh, obviously having too many voices in your head, right? Too many, too many cooks in the kitchen, right? <laughs> yeah. um, the same, you know, and too many voices. 
Um, because like at that point, like if you have too much information, when you have too much information and Brandon will love this probably too much information, like you're not going to make any, act. you're not going to take any action because you're right. almost like analysis paralysis. Like, right. like oh, you know, like, what do I do? Like I Overwhelming. have saying this, I have this person saying this. And then like, I think I should do this. And then all of a sudden you're like, you don't take any action and you really kind of, you know, at that point wasted money in my point, in my mind. So um, yeah. we're Brandon right here. I think it's important to be careful of spending too much money on coaching. It's yeah. very expensive. You need to implement the things you learn first. Yeah. And I think that's important is a lot of people not, and I don't know anybody personally, but I know I've heard of a lot of people that will just go to these things and go to these things and mm -hmm. go to these things. Right. And like, go to all these coaching sessions and stuff like that and never implement what they learn. Like, you know, and yeah. that was something I was doing, especially like in the first part of like me starting to read a lot of books, I would just read the book. I'm like, I just got to read this book because it's my goal to read 12 books. Right. Instead of saying, wait a minute, like, let me think about what I just read. Right. And then like, you know, so what, one thing I want to start doing is writing down like, okay, I just read this chapter. What did I learn? Okay. This is what I learned. Right. This mm -hmm. is what I took out of that chapter. So and take action. Yeah. Like taking from it and taking action. But absolutely. I think that just look at, look what I did, you know, this was years ago and I needed help and I needed, um, but yeah, but, uh, and I needed help and I went to somebody that, you know, I had been in a networking group and, and was available. And, um, you know, I thought, I thought I just needed, to pay somebody to keep me accountable, but it wasn't what I needed and it didn't work for me. I was telling them what I needed and they were just, you know, like I said, just taking my money. So I think it was, you know, you have to look, you have to definitely, um, you know, see, know what's out there and know what works for you. I think with, with the mentorship and coaching and whether you're paying for it or not, I think we can get so much out of, of, the experiences of others for free, you know, and there's so many people that out there that want to help you that you don't have to pay things for. But I think you get to the point sometimes in your career or your life and, you know, we have to pay to go to counseling or our insurance pays for it. Right. I mean, if we want, there are things that we have to invest in, but absolutely Brandon's right. Like you have to be really careful because some people are just out there to take your money and they say that they're a coach or they say, Hey, let me help you get your life on track, you know, but is it really, you know, what I got, I got a perfect story for that. And it just hit me when you said it. Uh, and so this was very early on and uh, Sean, I'm going to get to your question here in a second. I just saw it pop up. Um, but um, very early on in my like self-employed, like entrepreneurial career of what I was doing and I was really hardcore like networking. I was going to a group and stuff like that. And I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, but I remember going to this group, right. And there was this coach there and she was nice. You know, that person I'm just going to say that person was nice enough. Uh, uh, very nice person. Um, but they were, they were coaching somebody. Right. And it was, and I, and I remember asking this question. I think this is an important question to ask if you're choosing a, a coach and I would love to get people's reaction on this, but I think it's important to know like how many people are they, have they coached? Like mm -hmm. what is their track record? Like how have they helped other people? Like I, I just have to put this up there. Sorry. Plenty of sneak oil out there for sale. Yeah. Brandon, exactly. And, and so, um, and, and, you know, and I remember asking, she's like, Oh, I'm just starting my career in, in coaching and stuff like that. And, you know, I have, I have all these life experiences. I was like, okay, great. Like that. I mean, everybody's going to start somewhere. I totally understand. I'm starting from scratch. Right. Um, but then like, I remember hearing about them coaching somebody uh, and then like, basically like they had one set price. And then like, when I was like, Oh, I see the success that they, they helped that person with like all of a sudden the price jumped up. And I was like, you've only had one person. Like why, why are mm -hmm. we, why is there such a disparity in, in what, you know, what we charged here versus what we charged over here? And so I think that's a big thing is like asking how many, like, what's your track record? Like, what, let me see, like, if you were going to show somebody, like if someone came to you for graphic design work, right? Logos, 
you're probably going to show them some of your logos that you've done, right? And say, hey, these are the logos I do. This is my work. So that the person can see, oh, hey, this person's pretty good. Or, hey, this person, like, like I could draw better, you know, my, my 10-year-old son <laughs> could draw better than that, right? Yeah. Like, And so I think that's a big aspect, too. What do you think about that? Well, yeah, I think that you have to be very, very careful when you start teaching and coaching and saying you're – a coach. I mean, yeah, I think it goes back to the expert and, you know, the, or the advice and the expert opinions and all that. I mean, you, it's, it's a big deal to, to say that you're going to start coaching people. Yep. Quality over quantity, Brandon, and I made a great comment there, but it's, yeah, it's, it's a big deal to step into that world and be able to have the confidence, I think, too, to start coaching other people. But you have to obviously have the experiences yourself. And I, I definitely think that you've had to have helped many others before you start coaching people. Sure. I think the testimonials, the, you know, people want to know, what am I paying you for? How are you going to help me? Or because if not, it's just like with me, you're just paying them, take your money and say, what did you do this week? <laughs> so, I, I mean, there's, there's definitely people out there. And I think for me, you know, that person too didn't have the best history on some business as well. <laughs> so, you know, you, you have to look at their history and what, what they've done. And obviously I think it's, it's that feeling of, of knowing them and where they've been. And, um, you know, I, I guess everyone's different and they all, everyone's starting out too, but Sure. I, I, I question a lot. Not I don't want to be cynical or, or judgmental, but I question a lot when people are 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 being coaches, you know, health coach, fitness coach, you know, what are they doing? What are who are they? Um, you know, business coach, what what is what have they done for their business, other people's business? Absolutely. I mean, you can look at at with what a lot of this, you know, stuff not to get back on the 10x, but I mean there's there's a lot of proof in that, <laughs> what the, the success behind that, that coaching that you know is worth the time and energy and money that you're putting into it. Totally, totally. Like, like I said, it's any coach that you get, right? It's like, you know, like when you're, you're sitting down with anybody, what kind of certifications do they have? What kind of licenses do they have? How long have they been doing this? Like, those are all things that you want to ask a, a good, uh, your coach. And so I wanted to bring this up. Well, not that one. Where, where to go? Yeah, no, I love it. The whole plenty of snake oil for sale. John, John asked, do you consider uh, consider this podcast as coaching or mentorship? Hmm. Right, so, Brent, uh, Sean, are you talking about this? Yeah, uh, this millennial podcast. He, I, I would, yeah. I would say, and we say this all the time. We're not experts, <laughs> we're not but we've had life experiences, and if you get some type of coaching or mentorship out of this. I think that's an added bonus. I wouldn't consider us as a, that's like our sole purpose for doing this show. I think the sole purpose for doing this show is that we're millennials. We're, we're business minded people. Um, we're trying to, you know, steer the boat away from the old adage that men, millennials are lazy and stuff like that. But I think about a lot of stuff that we do talk about is, is like we're we're not just talking about it from a sense of like what we do but we're talking about it from a sense of like what to look for and like how it can impact you and stuff like that um so what about yeah. you what do you think yes as a complete works yeah okay. yeah um, i mean what do you think i think that i think that as far as guiding people to question themselves and for personal growth and business growth and relationship and all those things. I think that we, it could be looked at as some type of um, mentorship. I think people who are listening to podcasts and things that are out there, a lot of them are, are looking for some type of guidance or help or experience or, um, you know, direction maybe. So I think it could fall in a sense to that. I don't know that we've labeled it or thought about it at, la at least, but I know when we say that we're, you know, we're millennia yelling and we're giving a voice to, to our generation and, and things that are going on. I, I think it could, could tie in sure with, with, um, you know, trying to give people more confidence and, and, um, you know, using our experiences and, and trying to motivate people and, um, you know, in a sense of, of growth. 
So yeah. maybe. <laughs> I think I think what we do, and I think we do it pretty, pretty well, right? Um, I mean, you keep they keep coming back, right, Sean? <laughs> They're coming back, so it's a good thing. So I think, I think what this show is good at, and I think what we're good at is provo uh, provoking thought, right? And or, or now, like if you listen to what we say and it causes you to maybe think of something in a different light that maybe, hey, I do need a mentor or, hey, maybe I am getting bad advice or giving good advice, right? Or whatever. I think that's what a good podcast mentorship should do is cause you to stop in your like in your own process and think of a different way um because right, and that, all all different types of things yeah i was just gonna say sean just said i feel it is it is as you're steering people to take a look at themselves and look in a new direction absolutely um you know hopefully there's you know that's our goal is i think to is to to help people um you know in, in just looking at themselves you're right but you know it's even funny i I even said last week when we were talking about the whole advice and I told a bunch of my friends after and I even told you after, but it really made me think about what I was doing with with giving advice and the idea of saying, hey, can I give you my that, I, that idea of asking, you know, can I help or do you want a solution? Do you want comfort? Do you want can I give you my advice? Really? It even helps us. I think it's even, you know, some type of growth, obviously, for us while we're talking about it. And I did use it. I had um, all the girls over and you know obviously like I said there's a lot of advice being thrown out there and talking when it's when you, know, you get a group of girls together and we're talking about a lot of stuff with work and relationships and guys and friendships and 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 health and everything and I think that you know it even it just made me take a step back and and listen more too um, you know in that conversation so I think it's we hope that there's an impact that we can make for sure. Yeah. Hey, and uh, Brandon, if you're still on, I don't know if you were on when, when we first got on, but I just announced when we got on that Mel just got a microphone. Uh, <laughs> she got her blue, <laughs> microphone. Not, her, not her blue Yeti, a Yeti. And so uh, it's a, it's a blue <laughs> Yeti brand. It's a blue Yeti brand, but it's white. Cause I needed it to match my, <laughs> I'm, surprised, <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't get a rose gold one. Listen, I looked for it. <laughs> Kelly Ruth had that one. She had the white with the rose gold, but I couldn't find it. So I think it's the OG. She got, <laughs> she got a, you know, but no, I, I like this white one. And it's, if it sounds good. So what does Brandy got here? Business integrity is, is important. Uh, choose to work with while it's important to charge what customers are willing to pay. Coaches need to make sure their value proportion is not overblown. I have had an issue mm -hmm. in the past. And so I, I agree. I mean, you, uh, and then Brandon uh, said upgrade. Oh yeah, <laughs> micro I didn't have one at all. So I didn't, it was a major upgrade for that. Yeah, um, and so we were, that's why we, Brandon, that's why we got, we were on a touch late than we normally are because, uh, you know, we were trying to figure out microphone and stuff like that. So, uh, but um, but yeah, I think like going back to that, it, it's, it's definitely, I think we've all been like burned in the past. And so it's like, okay, you know, but it also makes you smart, right? It, mm -hmm. You start to look for, it's not just like, Hey, I'm just looking for somebody um, from that standpoint. So, but I, you know, I would like to know, like, and you kind of hinted on it earlier um, is mentorship, something that you would be willing to do for somebody. Absolutely. I've, I've had, I feel I've been a mentor. Um, you know, I don't think it, again, I don't think it was a labeled, it wasn't labeled. It was, you know, I have, I have mentors now. I've had them in the past. I've been, I've been mentored, you know, a mentor, but yeah, absolutely. I think even going through with the leadership Harrisburg course and the, the idea of, of growing my experience in leadership, obviously mentoring is, is a great way to um, develop more of the leadership and, you know, management skills and qualities and all that. But I'm, I'm, yeah, I would, I would definitely be into it. I think, I don't know. I've never really had anybody recently come uh, to me to ask, but I did, I do. I think it is that awkward. <laughs> I think it is like an awkward, 
thing. You know, you could go ask for, oh, ask for a job, ask for an internship, ask for advice. But I think that's where I said at the very beginning is, you know, do, do are people just your mentors? And are you just a mentor to somebody without knowing it? I think I think we're always it's being awkward. Watched. It's like awkward. Will you be my girlfriend? Yeah, <laughs> you know? be my you just become you kind of just become the girlfriend, you know, or you know what I'm saying? It's a, yeah, it's almost like being becoming a couple, right? Like in a sense. Like <laughs> it's because that person's probably gonna know a lot about you and like your struggles and gonna uncover a lot of stuff. And that's what goes back to like the trust factor and because I would hope that there's not any mentors out there that do this, but I would hope that it's kind of like a doctor, right? Like they keep mm-hmm. all your information kind of like close to the best. They wouldn't share sure. any of that information. I hope that no anybody that's watching this, mm-hmm. you know, that is a mentor, I hope, you know, you don't do that. Um, but I, I, I think that's a big aspect of what I'm going to look for when I'm choosing, you know, I guess a direct mentor of some kind is, you know, A, is it worth my time? Is it worth, because the price is only an issue in the absence of value. So um, I got to feel like there's a ton of value for, because I'm making an investment, right? I want that, I want that investment to come back, right? Say that again. What do you mean? The absence of value, something about price and the absence of value. Price is only an, uh, an issue in the absence of value. I'm writing this down. It sounds good. <laughs> One of my mentors told me that. Really? So like, See? Yeah, he would say like if like um, <laughs> Brandon, Brandon said, "I'll be your your mentor." <laughs> I'll be your mentor. <laughs> I like that. You're already my mentor. I just yeah. don't pay you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but me and Brandon have had great conversations, just talking about just life, and in uh, we we think along the same lines and stuff like that. So. But going back to the prices absence of uh, and those and those little things like that you pick up from like I would have never thought about that like when I'm in my own world of you know doing what I do it's like well why did this person not you know go with me and like it's like oh it's must something must be wrong with them right it's never wrong with me and so like when I heard that I was like I started asking questions so I was like you know be like. Oh, you know, I understand that you don't want to go with me. Like what, what did, what is it something that I said that caused you not to see value in what I do? And like, I've actually saved a couple of clients that way. Like they're like, well, I didn't really understand this. And I'm like, well, great. I can, I can help you understand that. And then it was able to close that value gap and say, mm-hmm. oh, well, now the price is, you know, it's not an issue because I see the value in giving, giving that up. Right. Yeah. Do you think that also, I mean, I know we said we talked about the whole thing with relationships. Brandon said that he accepts Starbucks gift cards. <laughs> yes. Um, yes, we all do. But I think I know we were saying about relationships, you know, maybe not necessarily being a mentor in a sense. But do you think that there is an emotional aspect to the person that you that you find to be more and I don't want to use the word attracted to physically, but um, when I say attracted to, but when you when you have somebody who's who is, you know, you you find this feeling, and it is maybe it's an emotion, or maybe it's just like this drive, this something in your gut that's telling you that they want to help you. What is that like when when you have this feeling like someone's going to be a good mentor? Do you think it is some type of emotion? Like I said, I don't want it to be a, like a romantic way or a physical way, but that you know, it's, it's something that you feel this excitement that they are, they want to help you and that it's a good feeling because you're going to not have that. It's just, I guess it is kind of like with friendships and relationships and with jobs and things, you kind of have to have that connection with someone and it, it, and, and that connection, I feel like it, it becomes some type of an emotional to you, whatever Mm -hmm. it hits you emotionally, like the whole thing with the 10 X. I mean, it's just, the idea of just wanting more and working harder and 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 all those things, the feelings that I get out of it when I hear this, the, when I hear a lot of that stuff, it's it's pumping me up. I get the feeling that I have; it feels really good. Yeah, I wouldn't call it maybe necessarily emotion. I would call it energy 
Right? Yeah. Like when you that's feel, what I mean. Yeah, I'm trying to when, yeah, when you feel somebody's energy, right? And you know, like because you can feel it, like it's it like when you connect with somebody, there's an energy, right? It's a positive, it's a it feels good, mm -hmm. like it feels easy, right? It feels easy to talk to them. Um, yeah, look, Emily, that's a perfect point. You have to be working on the same frequency. Right. And, that, and you know, same wavelength, same yep. connection, and you have to get each other because, and then Brandon brought up right here, you know, if you don't like that person, it's going to be really hard to work with them right. uh, and learn from them. Um, and I think that's a great point too, because, yeah, you know, having that energy with that, like if it's a down energy, if you don't have any energy with that person, you're not, you know, because you're not going to be excited to see them, right? When it's right. time to have that meeting where you're going to talk about some stuff, right? And right. Um, yeah, I would call it energy. Energy. Yeah, I like it. I'm, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm just saying, I feel like too, you have that energy. Yeah, energy equals passion. Yeah, absolutely. That's. I guess that's what I'm saying is I'm trying to figure out how to, how to word it. But I think that you get some type of, of, a, of a motivation, I don't know, and and maybe that's where you feel that value and whether it's free or not and you're paying for it. I think that it's, um, you know, it's, it, it's fun. It's exciting. It's not, it's not work or you're scared of them. I, mean, I don't know if that makes sense, but no, it makes, it makes perfect sense. It does. It definitely does. Because like, especially if that person's been where you are, right. Um, I think that's important. Um, mm -hmm. Like we've mentioned before, but like, you know, you can tell within the first, and that's why I think a lot of, you know, a lot of coaches do kind of like a free ish, like, you know, first like call, right. Cause they want to get to know you, you want to get to know them. Um, but I think for me, like, especially like in a COVID world, I think like you definitely need to see like a call is one thing. And that's a, that's a whole nother thing about mentorship. Like I think calls are great, but I think like, a meeting somebody in person face to face or at least a video chat is super important because like I need to see like your reaction when I talk, mm -hmm. you know, and because like even when we're doing this, like, you know, like people get to see how we move, how our demeanor is. Like if they were just listening, I know it's a completely different experience. I know for me anyways, when I watch a podcast, right. Or listen to a podcast, like when you listen to it, it's good. You're getting information. It's easy. You can just walk around and, and listen to it. But like when you're watching a live video or even a video of a podcast and you see like you hear somebody's story, but then you see their story, I think you, you get so much more out of that connection. And so that's something that I look for in a mentor that, you know, listen, I, I do want to do phone calls, but <laughs> I want to do mm -hmm. some type of meeting in person, some type of like version of this or something like that. So that's, that's probably going to be a big check on my checkbox right there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And I think, I think it helps with that interaction. I mean, sure. Uh, what do we say? Um, facial expression? Or, I don't know. I, I don't know what to say, but yeah, well, I agree. Well, I mean, most, well, I don't know the stat, Brandon, I'm sure, knows it because he's just the stat guy. Uh, but I think it's like 80% of communications nonverbal or something like that. And 20% is actual the words that you say. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that's it. I'm pretty sure. I'm yeah, I, that's what I was saying. What is it the with your, your um, I don't know, your, <laughs> I can't think of the word. You're, when you're. You got, you got a new toy. You're all like. No, you're when you're. Going around. If you're, if you're crossing your arms or if you're shrugging your face or if you're doing something and you're sitting back it's your posture it's your um what's it called crazy my mind is <laughs> i don't know but i get what you're saying like it's it's like anything like if you want to like mirror what's going on like if somebody's like frowning like you're gonna feel that like it's not like oh i see their i I already know they're upset or I know they're pissed off about something before I even ask them, right? Because of their body language, right? Um, body, body language. Body. That's what it is. Body language. That's why we have Brandon. <laughs> that's why we have Brandon. Brandon's like our fact checker. Body language. Your body our, language. Is, that, that's so much about absolutely. Nonverbal communication. Uh, Thank so, you, Brandon. Yeah. So we, we, we're going to definitely have you on the show here soon, Brandon. Uh, 
because you've been a long time listener. So we, we need to yeah, add you on. Verbal, yeah. Sean, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, like if I have my, if I'm sitting in front of somebody talking about their, you know, their financial future and I'm doing this, right. right that kind of says like, I don't really want to talk to you. Right. Like, oh, Oh, yeah. I mean, I just this week when I was with one of my girlfriends that I had um, caught up with, she's engaged and they're getting married in Colorado. And they she called a wedding planner on the phone out there because you have to go with a lot of the people out there and the vendors and all different things. And and she said that the woman on the phone said, yep, OK, what's the date? What do you need? How many people? What's your budget? And she just wasn't very personable, but it was obviously over the phone, too. But she gave her the budget and said, oh, ooh, yeah, well, you're only going to have to be you're only going to be able to use me for the day of coordinating and all this. And in a sense, it's not a mentor. I mean, you're hiring somebody to for their services. Um, but she said right off the bat, it was just not it was not a good connection right off the bat. So it's not, it goes in, in when you're hiring somebody for any type of services. I definitely think with with the coaching and if it's somebody that is even just a mentor that is a free, you know, that you're not paying, that's just there as a, as that wants to help you. I mean, you know, you definitely have to have that connection with that energy, like we said. Yeah. And, and Brandon just sent me a picture of a skeleton sitting there and it's still, still waiting on my uh, Starbucks gift cards. So. Oh, yes, he was. He, <laughs> yep. See, listen, did you see how long, Brandon, it took me just to get the microphone? I mean, we would <laughs> You know, we we talk about this stuff for a while. It'll eventually happen. <laughs> I think I think we just need to quote unquote hire Brandon for he's going to be our tech advisor for the millennial. Yes. So he he'll have all the technical things worked out for us. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. What do you think, Brandon? I'll we'll we'll give you a raise of one Starbucks gift card <laughs> every three months. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, I, I think, you know, just, you know, kind of close this out today. I think it is super important to have some type of mentor um, in every aspect of your life. And so, Brandon, I guess, uh, Brandon, is that, is that a, is that you signing yes. the contract right there? He's agreeing. Brandon, we'll send it over in the mail. Uh, I'm cool. You know, it's a smiley emoji with sunglasses. <laughs> better than online surveys. Yes. Um, but yeah, so you know, before we kind of get off today, like I said, you know, uh, what we, you know, if you're just, this is your first time watching, watching the replay, uh, you know, how we kind of close out the show is we have a couple things we like to do to kind of get the weekend started. Uh, and so the first thing that we like to kind of do for people is share with them because like I said, if you're watching, this is the first time you're watching this, uh, you know, my little niece, uh, told me that millennial or memes were so millennial. And so <laughs> in honor of her, we have the millennial meme of the week. So, and it is Mel's turn, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. So I think Mel actually had two. I, I didn't look at them. I just, you know, I, if you guys have, we use this thing called StreamYard and I can see a lot of the stuff in the, in the back studio. Uh, I didn't look, but I think I saw two pictures there. I can't, I couldn't decide. So sometimes when I can't decide, I pick two and or one what? might be a little bit like offensive. So then I use another one. That's a cute one too. So wh why don't we do this? Since there's some people watching, we need some mentorship. So let's pop up both and then we'll let the, the <laughs> crowd decide which one is going to be the actual millennial meme. So we're going to need some, Oh, we're going to vote. Yeah. So we'll, we'll need some votes here. So, uh, but Brandon's excited about the, okay. uh, <laughs> About the millennial memes. So go ahead. All right. I'm going to put the funny one up first. So people don't. So <laughs> so it's two It's two guys. One's a mentor. And it says, I'm looking for a mentor who will show me how to get rich without boring me with a lot of advice. <laughs> 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 Which is just, it's funny. So obviously, yeah. um, that's not what mentors are supposed to do. Yeah. But I thought it was kind of funny. Um, but then my real meme is... <laughs> it's a it's a little kitten and 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 he and she's kind of roaring but there's a little t-rex dinosaur and it says no no you gotta roar like this and it's the mentor so my my philosophy with this was that there's this little baby kitten who who is mentoring uh, a big big t-rex but it's like a mini toy but yeah mentors it's can co come in all shapes and sizes 
So. Yeah, I, I totally agree. So if you're watching this still, <laughs> vote on which one you want to be the millennial meme. Uh, and then sometimes we'll they're they're provocative, you know, they're not they're not always just cutesy and, and fun, you know, sometimes they're they're gonna be a little you know Yeah, yeah definitely. Bad. So um I love I love both of them. I'll give my vote in the in the comment. Oh Brandon, we got number a vote one. already. Brandon says number one. He's oh. yeah, because he said it's about ninety people, ninety percent of the people that I talk to. <laughs> Just make me rich and just, I don't want to hear a lot of boring advice. And Emily loved the T-Rex. Yes. Thank you, Emily. My little key. So I'll put, I'll put mine uh, in, in the comment section later and we'll, we'll tally up the votes. But there's the other moment that, that we like to share before the end of the show. And I think it's, it's, it's Mel, this is like you being a mentor. This is it. We I totally didn't <laughs> realize this. This is Mel's moment. We should call it Mel's mentoring moment. <laughs> I, like how, I, I like how we I, we uh, adapt each week with um with things and make these change realizations of things that we've been doing this whole time. But Mel's moment. Um, <laughs> I I forgot to say the millennial meme. <laughs> yeah, we, we need to pay somebody that. to make something some we kind of some jingle jingles. for us. Yeah. Yeah, I I think too that I really I really enjoyed talking about mentor mentorship this week, um, following up from the advice podcast last week because I think that they go hand in hand, and I really think that back to back we uh, it really gives us a lot of motivation to uh, lean on people that we know are going to really help us with our self improvement and be there for people who um, you know who who need mentoring. So I think, you know, go through this weekend and, and you know, recognize the people that you're talking to, the things that the podcast that you're listening, uh, the, the coaching, anything for professional, personal growth. And I think just try to try to think a little bit harder about these the things that you are listening to um, and, and even the, the advice and the stuff that you're giving and, um, you know, and really hone in on maybe what a, a great mentor is. Uh, that is in your life, but you just didn't really know about it because that's what I'm going to do. I think I have some, some people that I go to for advice, but I think I really want to start leaning on them. Like you said, looking for, um, you know, more mentors. And I think too, it, being a good mentor too, obviously you're not looking for anything out of it. I think with some of my friends and girlfriends and things with relationships, um, you know, it's hard because there's things that you don't want to be a part of. And then there's, there's people that, you know, could really benefit from that that, that advice and mentorship. So, um, you know, trying to, f trying to find that fine line of, of, um, you know, helping other people and being a mentor without getting too consumed <laughs> yourself. Uh, but I, I'm just loving the sound of this new microphone. I can't stop talking. <laughs> Is it just, no, I can't stop talking. Cause I, I just don't stop talking. Yeah. But. I was going to say that there's a reason, uh, but, but you know, I, I like, yeah, no, everything you said, I totally agree. I think take some time this this uh, this weekend to, you know, really retro, you know, we're a quarter into this year. Mm -hmm. You know, so April started the the second quarter. So this is a great time to kind of uh, retool mm -hmm. um, and kind of uh, take that for what it is. And, and Bear is evaluate. saying Bear is saying in the background that he wants to be a mentor. So Yep, yep. And uh, now and now Layla's barking as well. So oh. they're you know they they bark. They're they're each other's mentors. They're mentoring each other. They're just mentoring each other. So, but yeah, take some time this weekend, guys. Have some, you know, it's it's Easter weekend, right? Yeah, it's Easter weekend. So take some time to spend some with, with some family. Have a good time. Be safe. Eat lots of candy because that's that's what that's what you do on Easter. And you know, I don't know. Do you, do you still go after Easter eggs? No, there's gonna be, there's a little Hershey downtown Easter egg hunt tomorrow though. That's really cool. That a lot of the businesses got together and they're doing some type of deals and specials and egg hunt, which is really cool. I got to make stickers for that. But um, you know, just spending time with my family on on Sunday and we'll we'll do a mass, maybe a virtual mass. But um, but you know, since some of eight, my sister's not obviously able to be home, so you know, just just really spending that time with your family. Obviously, uh, like you said, I think is great for this weekend too. Well, well, guys, that's all we have for you today. If you enjoyed the show, please let us know in the comment section. But more importantly, go over to our page, The Millennial, like it, subscribe to it, you know, make notifications for it because we are live every 
uh, Friday, 12 o'clock, uh, with another episode of Millennial. So, guys, we hope that you enjoy your weekend, and we will see you next week. So have a good one. Bye. Bye.